Hello and welcome to our panel discussion today on simplifying account opening and loan origination for financial institutions. I am Mukul Agarwal and shall be your host and the moderator for today. I thank you all for making the time to join us. The response has been overwhelming and we are excited to talk about the need of simplifying customer onboarding and lending. I am pleased to introduce our panelists today. We have with us Brian Wilkin. He is Chief Information Operating Officer for Bank Midwest for more than five years now. Brian has a passion for solving problems, utilizing technology and maximizing efficiency. We also have Michael Green with us today. He is Chief Risk Officer at Citizens Community Federal for almost five years now. Michael has demonstrated success building customer focused cultures, improving loan portfolio health, credit, creating risk management infrastructure, growing business in rural and metropolitan banking environments. We also have Greg Salins, the head of center of excellence for US banking at Nugent Software. Greg served 17 years as Senior Vice President, responsible for several national industrial roles across various aspects of banking, like consumer real estate, consumer and business loan, commercial loans, to name a few. At the end of the discussion, we will conduct question and answer session. I request our audience to type your questions in the chat window or question window on your GoToWebinar panel even in between. However, we will take them towards the end of the discussion. I again welcome our esteemed panelists today. Without further ado, let me roll over to our first question of the day. Despite digital account opening and lending being top trends for the past few years, why haven't banks adopted these yet? Brian, your thoughts on this? Sure, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this panel today, and I'll share some of my opinions. Um, you know, they are just from experiences and serving the financial industries area. I've um, been doing that for quite some time now. I think, you know, when you look at that question, I don't, I don't think there's not a desire to adopt. And I think certainly we've heard this a lot, but it's true. You know, the pandemic has really accelerated that desire, that need. Um, I think there, there, it's always these hurdles to, to either against yourself. So like maybe we're going to launch something and it's not going to be as good as our competition down the street or that competition nationally comparing ourselves to Chase Bank or Wells Fargo or USAA. You look at their tax spend and you look at their solutions and it's like, I'll never compete with that. So I think, I think the desire is there. I think in the last 10 years, what I've witnessed is a lot of point solutions that solve one aspect, which is good. Um, I think as bankers and technologists, we sometimes wanna we want to solve the whole problem, and so then sometimes we don't jump in because I might not be solving commercial. So certainly, most people that have looked at account opening or looking even at banks that are doing it, we've all like started with retail and because retail is easier, there's less risk in retail, there's lower dollar amount, there's lower loan risk. So um, that's, a good, that's a good thought and it's a good way to build successes, um, but it also can be just a barrier if you think that you're not gonna find a solution that can solve all your needs at once. So, um, you know, I've got some other thoughts on that too. I think one of them is, geographic comfort I call it so I'm in rural Minnesota uh, we have banks in Minnesota Iowa and, and South Dakota uh, we have a long history you know, 140 year old bank that has a geographic comfort of like here's where our customers are and when we open up this digital world that's it's very scary because where do we really want to let our customers come from I think that's a huge um, hurdle right off the board with your board or management team to say are we comfortable you know can we mitigate risk so those are some of my thoughts on why do we not see as much adoption but it is it is changing for sure it's changing 
Yeah, and I would echo Brian's comments. And, and again, thank you for also including me in the panel uh, today. But, you know, when our organization kind of took a look at um, digital account strategies, we were also finding a lot of the same things. I mean, I think we looked at nearly 20 different solutions and many of them solved part of our equation, but, but really either didn't get us everything we needed or the cost benefit was restrictive, um, especially when you think about you know, starting out with a digital strategy and, and setting up online account opening, adoption takes a little bit to, to pick up speed. So, um, you know, I think one of the other kind of more significant things we bumped into in addition to um, solutions that couldn't do everything we wanted was integration with our core providers um, and other solutions. Uh, needed and uh, needed to get a complete end-to-end -end journey. Um, and, you know, one of the things that as we worked with the new gen team, they, they really helped us solve for is, is, you know, they had a lot of um, connections with our core provider and more specifically, the, they had the end-to-end -end that we were looking for. So, um, you know, it, if you think about what's going on in the market, um, we're putting cell phones in the hands of nearly everybody across the country. We're training them on, um, maybe not us training them, but you know, Apple is training them, if you will, on having things at, at their fingertips constantly and, and the speed of delivery of nearly everything across the country is, is just increased significantly. And, you know, there's an expectation from customers that, um, you know, banks are able to deliver with maybe more speed than we have in the past. So, um, you know, maybe one other thing I would reflect, uh, you know, as we looked at, um, this digital account opening strategy too. I mean, most bankers know that that over the past 20 years with the increase in regulation, the increase in a time it takes to open an account has magnified as well. Um, oftentimes on some platforms taking up to 20 minutes to get a, an online or to get a account opening process completed, um, regardless of what, what platform you were on. And, and, you know, that's changing. Um, there's now tools in in the marketplace um, that can increase the, the speed of that process and NewGen is one of them. No, oh, that's yeah, absolutely that's, right. That's yeah, absolutely that's, right, Michael. You know, I, I think, you know, you know, Brian and Michael are both testaments to uh, how to get it right. You know, they're change leaders. And so, uh, you know, it's not just uh, simple or everyone would be doing it. So it is challenging to to embark on the change journey like this. But and 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 be, uh, but it's also can be extremely exciting, right? To make to start to see a better customer experience, a better employee experience for sure, um, and obviously delivering the bottom line results. Um, but but you know. Michael, several uh, you know organizations that we've seen have struggled with the return on the investment, and we've been able to at Nugent Software come in and help uh, uncover how we can you know understand the priorities of the uh, bank or credit union, wh what what makes sense for them in their market because of the adaptability of Nugent. Uh, uh, the, our new gen one, as we know it, the platform and that capabilities to kind of march forward and then help them with that return on investment. Um, the ones that are very successful have a change agent, uh, but but this journey starts at that C level uh, suite, right? You you know, in the past they may have, as Brian mentioned, taken a point solution and and delegated that down, but when you start cutting and thinking digital, you're cutting across uh, departments and organizations across your uh, financial institution. So uh, those are some of the challenges that they have, you have to work through to, to overcome. 
Yeah, Michael brought it up, but the the integration, I think we willingly maybe sacrifice just because, like, if you want to be a, a leader in this, I, I know I weighed on in on this, Greg, you said this too, but I, I probably in my early, like, we're on, like, our third deposit solution, and in the early ones, we gave on integration because we wanted to give the, get the product out there, but then that starts to become... Uh, definitely working against you too because now you're either hiring bodies or you have a really inefficient process and then that you know every bank right now is trying to drive down efficiency and if you have a maybe a slick front end but your your back end is not talking to your core or the other solutions that that's not great and i think that only carried us for so long and it doesn't carry us today and that's why you know michael touched on it but um you know this this ability to communicate with technologies is there but you you still have to like push through the barriers and you know a company like Nugent in the world of APIs that they're highly skilled and it doesn't mean that you can just you can nail everything a hundred percent but they definitely have done enough um, enough work to understand kind of what you, what you're up against to try and have good integration so that you're not doing things uh, manually because that that's really what we want is a front to back digital experience for you know both the customer and the employee Absolutely. lending our deposit but that's a huge ask right there that statement right there has almost been unheard of in in the like right. community banks right and you know getting to a, a unified platform that can encompass um, the uh, lending to the deposit side, uh, there's few out there even attempting that that uh, capability. And, and, you know, it's not just the digital of today. I mean, we have regulations coming like the Small Business Lending Rule 1071. Not sure what that's going to happen, but, you know, even think back a few years to the PPP loan programs. I mean, you had to be able to respond and adjust and adapt to those. Uh, and so, uh, but, you know, not jumping jumping out there and making a decision is is worse than, you know, uh, you know is, is the worst of all. And, and so hopefully, um, you know, the, you know, many organizations out there will work to figure out the return on the investment, figure out the right partner. We think that Nugent Software is, is the right partner uh, uh, to help on that digital journey, uh, and then figure out a game plan to kind of move move forward um, to overcome, you know, why maybe some, some banks haven't, uh, you know, jumped on to cease this opportunity to grow their deposits and obviously grow their loans. and and uh, grow their organization. I think those are uh, some great discussion points. Uh, the highlight I would take for our audience is uh, the journey should start from the top and from the CXO level. However, I would add on uh, the other teams uh, below to that department or below to CXO should also look for digitalization to increase productivity of their processes. Absolutely. Let me quickly jump on to our next question uh, what is the cost of no decisioning or delayed decision for retail banks and why does it matter the most michael would you like to give your thoughts on this sure and this is i mean a pretty easy one um it's market share i i think just about every banker on this call knows that you you know there's other non-bank entities popping up across the industry that are competing for our retail customers in specific and even some for our commercial customers you know things like paypal venmo etc i mean they're all gaining traction so you know if you really think about banking as a service our industry itself has largely remained fundamentally the same for a really long time dating back you know probably not just hundreds of years but but beyond that you know what has changed though is the speed of the delivery model and right now or really in the last three years i should say our industry has gone through such a transition 
kind of speeding up processes that have largely been, you know, stagnant for, for the better part of the last 20 years. So, um, you know, as we look forward, uh, uh, the cost of a, a, a no decision is loss of potential market share when somebody else figures out how to deliver a client experience better or faster than we can. No, I mean, Mike, Michael's spot on there. Um, it, it, it's it's market share, but but it's, um, you know, many organizations are challenged right now to retain and, and uh, uh, new employees. And so the tools that they need in the, in the organization to simplify the the uh, training process, the engagement process, where they're not stumbling through multiple systems to try to complete a, a basic opening of account or a, a loan uh, when they could have a unified platform. So they're not delivering the ideal customer experience. They get, they potentially have frustrated employees that are not wanting to stay in the banking uh, environment. Uh, so there's another cost that, that that's sitting there. And then, of course, you know, right into the, to what Michael's saying, it's impacting your ability to grow, uh, not only grow, but also uh, reduce your operating costs and your efficiency. So it, it just uh, it's pulling it's a drag on the organization um, without making the decision and moving forward and starting to really prioritize and put uh, put uh, the processes, the capabilities on the right rails for success. Brian, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, and I agree with both of your comments so far. A couple other things I would add just from my experience. I mean, there's two that come to mind. So if you look at like bank valuations out there currently, and look, we want to keep community banks in this country like alive and well. Uh, we don't necessarily really want to get that number so low because it's not great for our, our small businesses and our customers in these wherever they live in this country. Um, so the you know the uh, value of a tech bank, right? So a bank that at least is like trying to stay on the forefront. Maybe they have stood up uh, digital account opening, have different niches. You know those valuations of those banks. So it's a return to the shareholders as well. And you're so I think we're seeing a divide there. <clears throat> so not making a decision could put you in a category of just not having a higher worth for, you, for the capital that's been invested in this bank. I think the other thing um, is really what you're missing out on is learning. It, it is, there's a lot of learning when you jump into the digital. Um, and you know I know from, we recently have just stood up a digital only bank with a different brand. And it's all API connected, and you know you can say the word APIs, but you you still are going to learn a lot going through that process. So it's just I look at those challenges as just really good learning, and it's putting us probably ahead of our competition. Um, you know this race for deposits and loans um, really this last year was so Im immediate. You know when interest rates were low. Most of us probably just didn't have a huge desire to, you know, to go after deposits in a different means. And then, boy, suddenly you go up 500 basis points and we're all like, oh, I wish I could open these online or market. I'm ready to tweak mine up. But if you don't have the digital channel, you're, you know, you're cutting yourselves out of possibly some opportunity. So I think you just, there's more tools in our toolboxes and, that we need as community banks. and. Uh, and credit unions out there so that we can adapt to what this economy is throwing us. And they're, like Michael said, our fundamental, we, you know, we borrow money, we take deposits, but now we're managing that so quickly. We're making liquidity decisions, you know, daily. We're making uh, loan pricing decisions just at such a rapid pace, which has nothing to do with tech, but then you need the tech to keep up with your decision making. Excellent points. Excellent. Great. I I guess uh, the message is clearly laid out, uh, not just for our audience, but anybody who is who is running a bank. 
that your the bank you are competing against is already looking to go digital so if if we are to capture that pie of the market share we cannot delay this decision anymore and, and Mukul, okay. just to sum to, yeah. just to sum that piece up i think is uh it's a responsibility to meet the customer where they are. And so we know that our customers are using the Amazon like service. Uh, they, they sit here on this device and quickly order something. It's on their doorstep this afternoon. Didn't have to worry about the payment. They're expecting the same thing from their bank. Excellent example, Greg. Yes. Uh, People are expecting an Amazon-like experience, a Netflix-like experience, if I have to add. And like like you said, uh, it's it's a responsibility to meet the customers where they are. All right, uh, moving on to our next question. Uh, before uh, I take this, uh, this is the last question for our discussion. Uh, our audience, please type in your questions if you have. After we cover this. Uh, question uh, all through the dash open uh, where our panelists will answer your questions okay i'll read out this uh, what are some underrated or ignored aspects of a successful digital deposits and lending transformation greg uh, your thoughts on this well um you know i think as, as you really get into this uh many times uh and we've touched on this a little bit but the the lack of being a fully unified end-to-end -end solution um and when in you know from from point of customer contact for whatever that task is whether it's open an account or a maintenance request or a loan uh request to completing that and putting that onto your core system um you know, many times it's it's ignored or assumed that, oh, well, our compliance group, that can be, um, we can still do this separate form outside of the process, or we can still do certain, you know, just because that's the way we've always done it. And so, um, number one, at Nugent Software, you know, we're going to keep you in compliance. Um, but the goal is, you know, how can we migrate and move to an environment where you never rekey any information, you never ask the customer to do the same. Um, ideally, your goal is to get to straight through processing, right, without that touch. So you can't always accomplish that. But if your vision is to accomplish straight through processing, it will challenge uh, your teammates and others to think entirely differently of the art of the, you know what's possible um, and so you know that that's really at the starting point i think um, of you know not just to, to stack up a front end piece or to do a little workflow in the back office but to really uh, the benefits of having that truly end-to-end -end unified uh, solution Yeah, Michael. Michael, ahead, Brian, Michael. thoughts on that? I was just gonna say I, I was kind of smiling because it it is it's smiling because it is a challenge. So the underrated things that I probably have seen as we do this is, um, you know, ability to push your team like pr professionally and not defensively, but it it, it is hard. Um, when you step into this digital journey, it is so easy to say, like, this is how we do it in the bank, and then just hand that blueprint to Nugent. And Nugent certainly will do what you want them, what you want to do, but they're they're going to offer, you know, maybe some best practices and just having full, from the whole level of the company, like, we're going to try and push this as far as we can to stay in compliance, to stay. Um, getting the things that we need to do to open an account, but there is some room, there's some wiggle room, some interpretation, and I think having some good partners, you know, like a Nugent, even different um, 
you know, professional bodies that, you know, weigh in on compliance when you're talking about, um, you know, satisfying all the regulations to, um, you know, I'm a huge proponent of let's try and ask the customers as few as pieces of information and go get it from trusted resources, you know, and that seems like a really simple concept, but when you start to put it into practice, you can get a lot of pushback. So some underrated ignored aspects is you really do want to dissect your process and put it all on the table, listen to other partners that, you know, are willing to understand like how far can we push this process to automated, you know, starting there. And then if you come back from that line, you've still moved the needle so far. And that's kind of what I've learned in this last year project that we've been working with Nugent on. Yeah, and you know maybe on a technical level, uh, following up on Brian's point, you know as we looked at partners, we spent a significant amount of time evaluating those partners' workflows, and you know I mentioned earlier. Um, I mentioned earlier that, um, you know, we had about a 20 minute account opening, account opening experience, and we were looking to kind of dial that down significantly. And one of our project goals was to get to five minutes. So as we looked at partners, one of the things we were evaluated was what I would call sequential versus simultaneous workflows in that. Um, you know, if you think about historical workflows, it's been fill out six data fields, push the next button, fill out six more, push the next button. And, you know, one of the things we really liked about the new gen software is, you know, through OCR, it would accept a driver's license. And then from there, it would automatically be completing data entry points on our behalf and pulling things like, um, you know, credit reports and, and doing other sorts of tasks so that, you know, in the end, we were really able to get down to about a five to eight minute account opening experience for the customer, which, you know, just is, is fantastic as compared to historical experience. Um, the other thing that we really liked is, is you know, with, um, with risk management related to online account platforms. Um, Nugent had some really good technology baked in where, um, you know, when you put a, an account opening solution out on the, on the web, folks from just about anywhere can, can make application and, and um, it, it creates a lot of, um, lot of backroom work. And one of the things that, that we really liked about their solution is that um, while folks can still make application, there's, there's of course, a lot of um, uh, technology behind the scenes that allows us to filter and screen out things um, that, that potentially could expose us to fraud. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, risk is omnipresent in, in, you know, any sort of, um, web-based technology and, and, you know, one of the things, or I should say the main reason why we partnered with new gen was speed and security. And, and, and I would like to add Mukul, you know, one of the biggest things that I have seen underrated is the omni channel benefit. Um, you know, it's not just that you have the same platform as we deliver from Nugen for the online channel and the in-branch channel. But, um, you know, the, the ability for that customer to maybe start online, but then walk into a branch is powerful. But one of the things that, that was a surprise to me was that customer that walks in on their lunch hour, that business customer and they need to open a new operating account maybe not their partners there with them they only have a, a couple minutes you can initiate that account opening 
and then um, complete it online, you know, by the signing process, funding, all handled uh, remotely. And it, it was a wow factor for the customer, a big conven you know, convenience factor for your branch personnel uh, in that regard. So um, the, you know, really getting to that omni-channel experience for your consumer as well as your business customers um, is, is something that, uh, again, it's back to meeting the customer where they are. Uh, and then in, in return, you will deliver a better experience, a better employee experience, uh, and you'll be more efficient um, and, you know, creating multiple wins. Yeah, Greg, I was, it's good that you bring that up. I, before we made our decision, I was, I was in the lobby of one of our branches and a customer walked in because we did have a consumer digital account opening and they said, they walked into the, you know, the person, our staff member, they greeted them and they said uh, these words, like, hey, I started an app last night, but I got stuck on it. And the words of our employee, I'm, I'm you know, they said the right thing or they said the only thing they could they're like oh i don't have access to that system so i can't really help i can help you open an account but we'll have to start all over and it's just like oh man like that's not meeting customers where they're at they took the time and put in probably a bunch of data and now we're just going to re-ask it so like we got to get this digital into our branches as well because the customers are doing that they're either starting digital and want to finish in branch or we could start them digital in branch and end them like in your example digital so i think that's just going to become table stakes greg i just i just don't see how it can't in the future of, of banking because right. customers are gonna choose with their choice to go somewhere else if they have those kind of experiences absolutely Great points, uh, folks. Uh, I would just say uh, it's easy to make complex things, but it's difficult to make things simple. This is what I would end up with the most underrated or ignored aspect is digital help us to not only segment the processes, but also make them simpler for both backend as well as the front end to understand and navigate easily. All right, uh, with that brings me to the last section. Uh, any questions from the audience? In the interest of time, I might not take all the questions. Do type in your questions. Some, if, if I'm not able to cover now, somebody from our team will reach out to you. Okay, I have a very interesting question and this goes for all our panelists. Uh, Greg, you may take it first. Uh, what technologies would be critical in the next evolution of digital lending and deposits? Well, uh, the request that we're getting and that we're investing uh, significantly in centers around machine learning and, uh, you know, uh, AI capabilities. Um, the ability we're seeing uh, out there um, more and more needs to predict uh, uh, a potential abandonment of an opening an account, uh, predict uh, the probability of uh, success of closing that loan, uh, or if what factors, if you change, you could still, uh, you know, save that and increase your pull through. So. Um, Lots of things occurring in, in regards to, uh, uh, and, and of course, at Nugent Software, we've invested heavily in um, um, acquiring the capabilities and developing the capabilities around machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, and helping both uh, improve the process. Um, the other piece I would add, I would add to that would be the, generative AI capabilities. Uh, you'll see Nugent will be calling that Marvin. Uh, and Marvin is the, you know, basically will be embedded to uh, look at maybe a document that's coming in in the loan process and review that document and the language within it. Uh, where today many times in commercial lending, those documents have to be manually reviewed and read. Um, 
and we have the ability to go in, review those, identify any outliers, consistency, um, and improve, again, quality, timeliness, responsiveness. Um, so th those are top of mind right now. Uh, Brian, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you kind of, I, I had notes or I thought about things like this, and you probably said a lot of them, but, um, you know, I think I'd reiterate, um, there is so many trusted data sources that we can get data and Michael mentioned this too, but that we don't have to ask the question, but it's like that is just not thought of like McCool, you're saying like, we want to make it easy and we can, if we are willing to like go and reach out and get data, whether it's the, even with the 1071, I mean, no one says we have to ask every one of those questions. If we can get those answers ourselves, then we're going to be a bank that has, made that process we comply with the, the regulation and we made a better customer experience i'm all about that i think the other thing that you didn't mention greg but is just um i i collect mail pieces so like i every time and these are all from my competitors these are banks that are doing embedded finance with you know um different niches and so I think that to answer this question, we need platforms that if I want to roll to embedded finance, I know that I can, you know, have a conversation with my platform provider and say, hey, I'd, I'd like to, we're going to partner with this customer of ours and they're going to pitch loans or deposits. And I, you know, I kind of want to have a, I want to have a tech stack or a solution that I could roll into that if we feel comfortable with that. Because it is happening. I mean, I am just amazed at, the banks that are doing embedded finance right in the Midwest right now, uh, reaching at our customers, trying to say, hey, this is quick and easy. You know, scan this QR code and we'll get you an answer. You know, we'll get you credit. We'll get you a loan. And so, again, I know we talked about it earlier, but that's what we're up against. And it's just it is it, every time I get one of these, I I have this, uh, you know, desire to get there faster. So there you go. Yeah, and I would just maybe double, double down on on both Brian and Greg's comments that, you know, aggregation, while it does have certain security challenges that will continue to evolve, I mean, that is the future for us. It's putting our hands on information that's captured elsewhere and tapping into that um, to increase the speed of our process. And, you know, where something isn't available, then it's, you know, what can we do to continue to develop OCR technology so that we have our personnel focused on relationships and less on being data entry clerks. Absolutely. Great points, great points. Uh, I'll, I'll take this last one uh, for now. Brian mentioned opening an online only bank. Is this for deposits only or for loans as well? Yeah, so uh, we recently stood up OnePlace.Bank. Um, it's a different brand. It's under the same charter of Bank Midwest. I'm actually going against the grain. I'm going commercial deposits and commercial lending. So I, I, I am practicing what I preached, I guess, and I didn't take the easy route. I took a harder route. We're going after um, a specialty niche of office-based healthcare professionals. Uh, we do a lot. Uh, we're focused on equipment loans. And then we're now uh, pitching uh, like business interest checking accounts with if they'd like treasury services. Um, that's kind of our go to market strategy for the first phase. Um, we, we actually have plans to then roll out consumer later, but um, we are trying the commercial road first and it's, it's certainly a little bit harder challenge, but uh, we are currently live with one place dot bank and um, it's fresh off the, the invention table. So thanks for the question. All right, uh, in the interest of time, if you have st still any more questions, the email ID is on the left bottom of your screen. Do write to us on info at the rate nugentsoft.com. Somebody from our team will definitely reach out to you. 
so with that uh, i hope it's a wonderful session for all our audience i am taking back a lot of learning with me uh, so i with that i thank all our panelists for joining us today thank you all for taking time to be a part of this uh, discussion have a good day ahead thanks thank, thank you, you thank you